Mostly, I got games that are kinda good. Nothing groundbreaking, but still decent. My review method is simple. I highlight the good and the bad to show you balanced, honest view of the product and of course, if I had fun, I was gonna tell you that. But every now and then, I stumble upon something interesting like this. Oh, and just so you know, I got the key for the review from the publisher. Let's dive in together in that mess. You will see what I mean. Starship Troopers Extermination is mainly an online game where you team up with other players to play a soldier from the famous Starship Trooper franchise. You are especially cannon fodder in a new unit under Rico, the main character from the first and third movie, and yeah, I hope I'm saying the actor name right, Casper Van Dien, who also voices Rico in the game. The guest you are a soldier completing missions across different planets and locations. Some are inspired by the movies, others are new, sometimes you extract resources, secure bases, or defend them for a set time. But the main task? You shooting ugly alien bags in the name of democracy. Expect to send out 60 rounds of pure freedom per minute, or even more if you are feeling patriotic. It's a first-person shooter where you pick up a soldier class, each with its own pros, cons and special abilities. I mostly played as the Guardian class because, well, honestly, it's the most fun. You may ask why. A weapon with 200 democracy rounds per magazine. Meanwhile, the Ranger class had me reloading more than shooting thanks to its crazy fire rate and small magazine. Did you play the game? Maybe you have your own favorite class. If so, write it in the comments. If you never play it and you want to, I recommend starting with the tutorial and solo missions. They give you a bit of backstory and help you get familiar with the controls. It's not crucial, but since most missions from solo will be also in line, knowing what to do can save you a lot of confusion. In the game, you have your primary weapon, a secondary weapon and some extras like healing items or grenades. Before missions, you can customize your gear. As you gain experience with a specific class, you unlock skins and weapon attachments. But fair warning, secondary weapons are in much help in bigger fights. They are most of a last resort. Quick stop! If you are looking for reviews of indie games or lesser known projects, then consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks and back to the video. The big new feature, building stuff. You and your squad can set up walls, ammo depots, tower, gates, and more. It's actually pretty cool. In online matches, watching 60 players transforming an open field into a fortified base in a second is both immersive and satisfying. I won't lie, this feature is one of the things I genuinely like it about the game. The game at its core brings the movie's vibe straight to the gaming world, much like Helldivers 2. On one desert map, I was running through fields filled with alien corpses, just like in the movies, and the more bodies stacked up in one spot, the higher you had the climb to keep moving. It's a simple but awesome detail that really nails the cinematic magic. On the flip side, I'm not a huge online player, and I don't care about socializing while I'm playing. So the open mic feature, yeah, it was annoying like hell. <laughs> Sometimes you'd hear people screaming democracy or saying something immersive, which is fine, but other times it was just random babbling, people talking about dinner or stuff nobody cares about. I came to play the game, not listen to strangers, yep. Imagine being on map with 16 players and three of them decide to have a loud conversation for everyone to hear. Nope, mic muted. I can't blame anyone for preferring Helldivers 2 over this game. Honestly, after what I experienced, I'd recommend sticking to Helldivers 2 like, for sure. <laughs> Let me break it down. I have a decent PC. Not top tier, but not bad either. Ryzen 7 5700X, RTX 3070, 16 gigs of RAM, and of course I have the game running on SSD. The game recommend settings are for a GTX 1070 and Ryzen 5 3600, so I thought I'd be fine playing at 2K resolution. Spoiler alert, I wasn't. During one single player mission, I had some downtime, so I started tweaking the settings to find the perfect balance between stable 60 FPS and decent visuals for recording for you and other viewers. Even with my best compromise, the game wasn't stable. Then I jumped into online mode, the game wasn't stable, but still somehow around 60. Then I jumped into an online mode, and oh boy, what a nightmare. Stable 60 FPS in online mode? Just a dream. The frame rate constantly bounced between 20 and 40 FPS in intense moments 
moments, like when a swarm of enemies attacked, it dropped to 12 FPS or less. A PowerPoint slideshow has more frames than this game. I lowered the settings mid-match, tweaking every performance-related option. But when things got chaotic, the game turned into a slideshow, then it crashed, frustration hit max level. After calming down, I checked Steam discussion. Turned out it wasn't just me. Players with even beefer PCs reported the same issue, although reviews praised the game during early access when it ran well. But after version 1.0, everything went downhill. Believe me, dear viewer, this is horrific. The culprit, the switch to Unreal Engine 5 and the implementation of Epic Online Services. EOS is supposedly there for cross-play, but it's more like Epic unnecessary baggage. Developers even created a Steam thread explaining that you can delete EOS files manually but you won't be able to play in crossplay. Well, with small number of players, it can be a problem. Fun fact, removing EOS didn't break crossplay with console players, just with Epic Store users. So yeah, I deleted it instantly. No Epic garbage on my PC. Thanks. But you can tell me in the comments if you do use Epic services at all, besides claiming free games, as I don't even wanna these free games too. What's even funnier is that devs knew that there would be a huge backlash, so on Steam discussions tab, only devs can write anything. As I work on this video, they released version 1.1, but some people said it made things worse. I noticed a few stable moments, but 30 FPS was the max I could get on Full HD resolution. For a game like this, it's unacceptable. Look, I'm not here to kiss up to publishers or developers. Saying only nice things about this mess would make me sound like a Kotaku or IGN reviewer who got the cash for that. There are some good ideas here, but they are completely buried under technical issues and poor performance. And the funniest part, the game is more expensive than Helldivers 2. So no, I don't recommend it. Don't buy games that run like this. Save your money for something that's actually playable. See ya.